One Lincoln One, One Lincoln Two, robbery alarm, three seven one seven one ninety six, covers the freezer, silent holdup. Lincoln Two. Lincoln One. David Newbert, Medical Director for TACMED LLC. I'm board certified in emergency medicine and emergency medical services. I have 20 years of experience in EMS. Hi, my name is Dr. Rick Pescatore. I'm the Deputy Medical Director for TACMED. I'm an emergency medicine resident in South Jersey and I have 10 years of experience in EMS with a lot of international medicine experience. Thank you for joining us today. Rick and I are here to teach you about hemostatic agents and bleeding control. Exsanguination, or bleeding out, is the most common cause of battlefield deaths as well as a constant challenge faced by civilian first responders and medical professionals. Understanding bleeding, the body's response to hemorrhage, and techniques for hemostasis, or bleeding control, are the keys to saving lives. First, we will discuss bleeding. Bleeding is the body's natural response to an insult that breaches the skin, our first line of defense. The flow of blood from a wound helps to clear toxins and debris from the area. Bleeding also serves to bring important cells and cell signals to the site of the wound, an important step that begins the healing process. Some of the cells that are brought to the site of the wound are platelets. These platelets will work to join together to form a platelet plug, the body's first step towards stopping the flow of blood. Eventually, more cells and enzymes will arrive in an effort to form a clot on top of the platelet plug. If the body is successful, the bleeding will cease. In most cases, bleeding will stop on its own or with direct pressure and addressing. In severe injuries, though, bleeding can progress uncontrolled and lead to death. If a patient has suffered a large venous or an arterial wound, they can bleed to death in less than three minutes. Rapid treatment of hemorrhage is necessary to prevent exsanguination. Untreated, loss of blood will cause the body to go into hypovolemic shock. This is a state where there is not enough blood in the body to maintain a blood pressure or to carry adequate amounts of oxygen to the body's organs or tissues. Signs of shock include a rapid heart rate, fast breathing, sweating, pale clammy skin, changes in alertness, and unconsciousness. If untreated, shock will progress to death. The most important step to combating shock is to stop bleeding as fast as possible. Direct pressure should be applied to any bleeding wound. If the bleeding does not stop, or if your initial evaluation suggests that direct pressure will not be sufficient, a tourniquet should be placed if possible. Some wounds, such as shoulder wounds or high groin wounds, may not be amenable to a tourniquet. Some wounds may continue to bleed even after a tourniquet is placed. Some patients may be on blood thinners or anticoagulants such as warfarin or antiplatelet agents such as aspirin, which prevent platelets from sticking together. Trauma patients and patients that are in shock often see a drop in body temperature. Hypothermia causes the blood clotting cascade to be less effective, increasing the rates of hemorrhage. Use of a hemostatic agent can lead to greater bleeding control success rates in these cases and faster control of hemorrhage. Hemostatic agents should be applied directly to the source of bleeding. Pressure should be applied until bleeding stops, usually within two minutes. Once bleeding has been controlled, the hemostatic agent should be left in place and the wound dressed in a normal fashion. Hemostatic agents are found in a number of forms, including granules, 
impregnated into gauze, and in an applicator meant to apply the agent deep into a wound track. Cellox is one hemostatic agent that is an effective and versatile option for control of life-threatening hemorrhage. Made from chitosan, a granular derivative of shrimp cells, Cellox holds a strong positive charge and acts independently of the body's own clotting process to aggregate negatively charged red blood cells and platelets at the site of the wound, creating a tenacious clot and stopping bleeding quickly. Cellox does not set off the normal clotting cascade. It only clots the blood it comes directly into contact with. This ensures that Cellox will still work in the setting of impaired natural clotting mechanisms. For example, a patient taking aspirin, warfarin, or other blood thinning medications, or the hypovolemic shock state. Cellox use is easy. Just pour, pack, and press. Pour onto the area of the wound, pack any cavity with either Cellox or gauze, and press. Compress the wound to push the Cellox into place and stop blood flow for a short period while the Cellox clot develops and strengthens. The amount of time and pressure required depends on the pressure at which the blood is coming out of the body. For minor wounds, fingertip pressure for a few seconds should be adequate. For more severe bleeding, strong pressure for three minutes with Cellox gauze or up to five minutes with Cellox granules or as long as reasonable in the circumstances. A newer generation of dressing called Cellox Rapid shows superior performance in recent studies, requiring less time to control bleeding. The first step is to identify the bleeding site. High-density gauze should be packed directly to the source of the bleeding, maintaining pressure on the bleeding point. Firm pressure should be held for one minute or until bleeding stops. Finally, wrap and tie with a bandage to maintain pressure. Direct contact plus direct pressure equals success. Cellox is not a pharmaceutical. It is classified as a medical device. It is not thrombogenic. It acts to form clots only at the site of the wound. The clotting reaction does not produce heat, and there is no danger of burns to either the patient or a provider. Cellox is safe in patients with a seafood allergy and is non-allergenic. Hemostatic agents are not to be used on mucous membranes, including ophthalmic or intraoral lacerations. Cellox should only be used on external injuries and is not approved for injuries to the chest or abdomen. Cellox is easy to remove. The strong gauze will pull out intact, and any residual hemostatic agent will be safely resorbed by the body. Granules can be washed from the wound with saline or tap water. It will not adversely affect later wound healing. In conclusion, rapid control of bleeding is key to saving lives. Hemostatic dressings, such as Cellox, have demonstrated to be effective tools for immediate hemostasis. Hemostatic agents can be employed for stab injuries, gunshot wounds, falls, penetrating trauma, and other sources of traumatic bleeding. Consider using hemostatic agents in conjunction with a tourniquet based on the extent of hemorrhage and wounding pattern. Ensure that the hemostatic agent is pressed directly against the bleeding vessels. Use of an impregnated gauze product such as Cellox Rapid and packing the wound has become a popular option to achieve this. Remember, identify the bleeding site, pack high-density gauze or granular product directly into the wound and against the source of bleeding, maintaining pressure on the bleeding point. Apply firm pressure until the bleeding stops, and then finally wrap and tie with a bandage to maintain that pressure. Direct contact plus direct pressure equals success, and control of bleeding will directly save lives. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you learned something about hemostatics and their use of control of hemorrhage. We especially want to give a thanks to our friends from Cellox who helped in the production of this video, which was brought to you by TACMED LLC.